Hugo in the Bing Lounge. Thank Hugo, you. it's great to meet you. Great to have your band here with us today. Uh, you have such a unique story, and you just sort of admit to all kinds of things, like wanting to catch people off guard. So I'm going to throw it back at you. And, and having a love for a certain kind of 70s sound. But you're very global, and I really appreciate that, too, from London to Thailand to New York. But I'm very intrigued about the Thai part of it. And I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about all that and what it, what it made you today. Well, I've, I have a um, Thai family on my mother's side, so the, the link was, was uh, inevitable. Um, but uh, yeah, and I was working there for about seven years uh, in music and entertainment and all that. And uh, I suppose working in Thailand is strange in the fact that it's a tonal language, so that affects the way you write songs and uh, the way you approach melody and, and things like that. But also because there was a generation of musicians who were slightly older than us, uh, or some were significantly older, uh, who were playing um, as young as young men and teenagers were playing in bands for GIs who were on R&R &R or who stayed behind in Thailand um, in the mid 70s. And so there's this American blues rock hangover that sort of existed and sort of got passed down and stayed in some of the karaoke machines and jukeboxes and things. So bands like the Credence and the Doors suddenly started to feature hugely in, uh, in, in what we were doing and seemed to fit the, the landscape in a sort of twisted sort of cinematic nostalgia. Um, and that's all seemed to sort of fit into this sort of heat and, uh, old school rock and roll and the sort of feverish temperature and, and catching a few tropical fevers actually helped me to sort of get into that mind state too. But then you've got like a hip hop bridge and I, there's a banjo on the stage that we're going to be hearing. And so your music has a very Americana feel. It's like you're just crashing through all borders. Yeah, I think at this late stage in the game, all you know, you, you, you've got to know what you like and you don't have to just like one thing. I think to reference just for rock and roll bands to continue to reference recent rock um, will end up in it being diluted from what was so great about it in the first place, which was the mix of uh, soul music, of blues, of country, of occasional Latin influences or whatever else was happening at the time. And it, it seems like uh, rock and roll might have slowly become this condensed super pure elitist thing which is not really what rock and roll is about and so i have always feel that you should always include there should always be something to make it uh, original some other element did you write uh, most of your songs in thai I, or, when, yeah. When, yeah, yeah all of them yeah so that did create a different kind of rhythm like you said the, yeah there's the rhythm and but mainly it's it's the tonal it's the it's the fact that you're constrained by wanting what you're saying to actually sound uh, proper and correct. Um, otherwise, the meanings of the words can change from dog to mother to horse in this, if the tone isn't right. And so the, inf and the tone of the pre preceding word affects the inflection and intonation of the following word. So y you kind of have to work within a more traditional song structure. Now, uh, just recently, you were signed to a label I would never th dream of if I had just heard your music out of context, and that would be Jay-Z and Rock Nation, which just happened last year. Tell us a little bit of that backstory. Well, I had previously um, been recording and preparing to release a record on Island Records in the UK, <clears throat> probably around 2006, 2007, and made during what may have been one of the last sort of uh, record deals of the early 21st century that where money was being thrown around and songs were being recorded and all different producers were being worked. So this body of material and eventually I got dropped and, uh, and then they, uh, my writing partner, Amanda Ghost took, had my record with her and she was writing for Beyonce and she played it to Beyonce and she picked a song off the record that she really liked and decided to record it that very day and and my uh, fortunes were reversed. Just like that. Just like that. Yeah. And so now you have this beautiful record, Old Time Religion, you have banjos in it, you have this, this very wonderful songwriting and lyric and voice and I think we should hear some more.
Great. Yeah, Hugo. Thank you. Bing Lounge. <laughs>